This is going to be a flip video on chemical reactions, and this is just an introduction. As you've seen in lab already, you've known what chemical reactions are. You've noticed that anytime there's a color change with a new substance being formed, that you have a chemical reaction. Here are some other evidence um, that indicate you have a chemical change that you've, again, already seen in lab, such as change in luster, meaning it went from dull to shiny, rusting, a solid forms, which we're now going to call a precipitate, so taking two liquids and forming a solid out of them. A precipitate is seen in the picture with the yellow solid that's forming. If you notice, two liquids are being poured together and a powdery solid forms, that's a precipitate. Um, some other proof that you have a chemical change in lab can be bubbles forming, heat being released, a flame being produced, um, gas being released. So take a look at these pictures here and hopefully they look familiar. So what this chapter does is it takes your chemical reactions and we write them in a chemical equation. So all of your chemical changes create a new substance and the sentence that helps explain that is called a chemical equation. So let's start by remembering that a chemical change is a rearrangement in the atoms. You start off with something, they rearrange, and they form into something new. So an example would be methane gas, which is what comes out of the jets in our lab, combines with the oxygen in the air, and you get something new. You get carbon dioxide and water. Um, chemical change is also known as a chemical reaction. And a chemical reaction we can express by using a chemical equation. So lots of chemical chemicals. In a chemical equation, it's important to know two things, and that is the reactants are given to you first on this side. And again, the reactants are whatever compounds you're dealing with. And then an arrow is used, and the arrow stands for yields or to produce. And what happens is your reactants rearrange and form new products. So the reactants yielding products is what's called a chemical equation. Some important symbols to know is that again the arrow means yield or to produce and if you put a triangle over the arrow that means heat is being added to this reaction. Uh, some other important things to know is that the arrows can be double-sided like this or double-headed. That means the reaction goes forward and it can be reversed. Some other important symbols you're going to see are the following. S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas. AQ is another symbol which stands for aqueous. Aqueous means that it dissolves in water. Think about like aqua. So let's take a look at this picture seen here in the corner. This is a picture of atoms going through a reaction. And so this is going to be a chemical equation that we're going to write. And if you notice here, you start off with a hydrogen molecule, that's H2, and an oxygen molecule, and another hydrogen molecule. And these hydrogen and oxygen molecules rearrange and form your final product, and that is water and water, so two molecules of water. Have we lost anything? Have we produced anything brand new? Well, yes, we made something new, but we made something new from the old atoms. So if you were to take inventory and count, you notice that you started off with one, two, three, four hydrogens, and in the end, you still have four hydrogens, see here, three, four, but they've attached in a new way. Same thing with the oxygens. You have one, two oxygens, and you still have two oxygens on the other side. It's just that they've rearranged. So that is what a chemical reaction is. And so the law of conservation of matter states that the number of atoms in the reactants have to equal the number of atoms in the products. Again, remember the reactants are on the left-hand side of the arrow, and the products are on the right-hand side. Reactants react to form the final result, which is the product. So matter is neither created nor destroyed. Instead, it's rearranged. 
So let's take a look at this chemical equation given to us here. Again, on this side of the arrow are the reactants, and on the right-hand side are the products. And it asks on the slide, how many atoms of sodium are there? Well, here are the sodium atoms all alone, and we'd say that there are two atoms of sodium. So this coefficient can mean many things. It tells us that there's two of the sodiums. How many molecules of chlorine are there? Well, here is chlorine, and if you notice, it actually should be written like this, but the iPad kind of changes it, that there are one molecule of chlorine, because chlorine attached to chlorine, two atoms that are the same is a molecule, so there's one molecule of chlorine. How many molecules of NaCl? This big two says there's two molecules of NaCl. What state is chlorine in? That's given right here. The state of matter is a gas. Notice how it comes at the end, and it's usually written a little bit smaller. What state is sodium in? Here is sodium, and it's a solid, S for solid. How many total chlorine atoms are there on the reactant side? Again, remember the reactant side is over here. And atoms, there are two atoms of chlorine. Remember, here we are again. One atom is bonded to the other. Two atoms. How many chlorine atoms are on the product side? Here's the product side. There's two atoms of chlorine. The last thing we're going to talk about is a concept called taking inventory. So let's take a look at this chemical equation given to us. So I have CH4. Again, that 4 should be a little subscript 4. And 2O2 yields CO2 and two H2Os. Okay, so there are big coefficients in the front. If I'm going to point those out. Those stay nice and big. All the other numbers should be subscripts, little, little, uh, little numbers. Okay, so if you notice, I've made a little chart here and I have reactants and products written. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take inventory, meaning I'm going to count how many I have of each element. So in the middle, I'm going to list the elements I have in total. I've got carbons, I've got hydrogens, and I have oxygens. It doesn't matter which side they're on, that's all I have. Okay. Now I'm going to ask, how many carbons do I have on the reactant side? Why don't you take a guess? How many hydrogens? And how many total oxygens? How about on the product side? How many carbons? How many hydrogens? How many oxygens? So let's take a look and see if you got this right. If you look here is the answer. I have one carbon atom. I have four hydrogen atoms. And as for oxygen, I have two here as well as two times as many, so two times two is four. We've done this before, but now we're kind of doing them in chemical equations. So you have multiple ones that you're doing. Um, on this side, I have one carbon atom. I have two times two hydrogen atoms there for a total of four. And I have two oxygen atoms there, plus another two here for a total of four. So if this was a balanced equation, then my reactants and my products would match. So let's see. Carbon, 1 and 1, match. Hydrogen, 4 and 4, match. Oxygen, 4 and 4, match. This is a balanced equation. Right now, we're just taking inventory and seeing if things match to tell if they're balanced. We haven't learned how to balance yet. That's coming up next. So. Something that should be easy for you to do since you know nomenclature, which is naming and formula writing, is to be given a, an, a balanced equation seen here and to be able to write it using words or to be given words and to form the formulas. So if we look here and we're given the formulas, and remember these numbers here are supposed to be subscripts, but the iPad doesn't convert them well. So I've got solid ammonium dichromate, there's the solid, ammonium dichromate is the name of the polyatomic ion, yields, and if you notice that is gaseous 
nitrogen and solid chromium 2 oxide I'm sorry chromium 3 oxide and gaseous water so if we take a look at another example that's maybe a little bit easier and that's this right here and we could say gaseous hydrogen or hydrogen gas and oxygen gas yield or yield to produce liquid water. This one's a little bit easier but you should be able to do any of them since we finished our naming chapter in formula writing. A few things you should also remember are the diatomic molecules. These molecules are basically atoms bonded to themselves and there's seven of them and they spell out a kind of ridiculous word and that word is Honkelbrief. Yes, it's made up. All of these elements, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and fluorine, Honkelbrief, if they are by themselves, you have to put a little two as a subscript. They can't exist alone. They must be connected to somebody. They must be bonded to something. And if there's nothing around to bond to, then they bond to another one of themselves. These are the diatomic molecules. You need to memorize these seven.